Many months ago, we took on the challenge of restoring this once forgotten about mini Clubman estate. And I say we, because without you guys, it certainly wouldn't have been possible. This car has thrown some serious challenges at me, but most importantly, it's taught me a valuable lesson in life. And that lesson is to never let anybody tell you, you can't. If you put your mind to it, the negativity will disappear and the outcome will be positive. Anyway, in this one, there's not so much work, but a rather well overdue update of why this channel has been so quiet. So then, ladies and gents, you're probably wondering why there's been no episodes on this channel for quite some time. There's many reasons to do with that. One of them is you've probably seen that I did have the virus and it took a while to get over that. The other reason is my camera's broken. I've been in arguments with Canon on trying to get it fixed and that has now just been sent off for repair. So everything is still being filmed on the iPhone. Then there's the other thing of the house. Now the house, I've not been able to get to Wales for four months. So the house has just been sat there and all of a sudden I've had to get everything sorted. Now, in the background, there has been things going on with this car, which I will get to in a second. But I'd just like to introduce you to my little helper that's hopefully gonna be joining us on this channel a lot more often. And this, ladies and gents, is my little helper. This is Elsie, the little Border Collie. She's five months old, we've had her for two months, and she's absolutely gorgeous, aren't you? Aren't you, Babs? Give her a look, say hello, say waves, waves. We're still in the process of training her. She's really well behaved and we've got her for the main reason we'll be going to the house in Wales a lot and there's plenty of space for us to run around. You saying hello? Go on. Who's that? With all that said, let's get on to having a look at what I've been doing to the car because there has been plenty of work done but I need to explain about what's been going on. Now, for the avid watchers of the channel, you'll note that I've been banging on for ages that this bulkhead needs replacing. Now, I was gonna fabricate my own bulkhead, smooth it off and make a nice big shelf. The problem with that is it doesn't look OEM and when I lift the bonnet, although there'll be a Honda lump under here, I still want it to look OEM. I could have spent my life going around patching areas like this as such. The problem with that is there's a lot of grinding down to be done and it'll never be perfect. So, what I have done is this. I, let me get it in have purchased half a mini and chopped it up into this. To explain things a little better, the idea is to save this cross member and hopefully I won't have to replace that because this is still pretty solid. Albeit there's a little bit of surface rust, but I think a bit of cure rust and a bit of sanding back should sort that out. But you will notice this bulkhead section is pretty mint all bearing this bit here. Now the problem with buying a used Mini is they all rot in the same positions. Luckily this one isn't as bad as this. Now if I was to buy a genuine heritage panel, I would have to replace the bulkhead, the cross member, the tow board and the firewall. And those panels are around 400 pounds and I just couldn't justify it because it'd mean all the pieces that I'd fabricated for the bottom, that work was wasted and I put a lot of time into that. So the plan is to separate this, pit, unpick all the spot welds, weld it into this position when the car is off the jig. And the next thing we're gonna get onto is what I've actually been doing is some welding work, some fabrication. It's been a nightmare to say the least, and it has involved a lot of cardboard aided design lads and girls. That one's been cut up because I couldn't be bothered going in the house getting another piece of cardboard. We'll get into that right now. So, probably see there's been some extensive works carried out here at the back and it's mainly been involved with cardboard aid design. Now these pieces here have all had to have been fabricated by myself because you can't buy those patch pieces without buying a full rear floor and again it's very expensive. We've took the rear of a lance off, we've had to take the cross member out which is not completely out and then we've had to buy these boot repair corners for each corner and we've tried to put them in without losing the press marks in the car. Now, for those absolute mini geeks, you will know there is a press mark here and a press mark over there. But in the repair panels, the press marks don't exist. So what I've done is 
I've made sure it's mirrored either side and I've left the press marks in the middle. So hopefully the people without the keen eye will just think, yes, that car's mint and there is nothing tricky going on right there. The next thing we're gonna do is replace the cross member, which we're gonna use the jig, which made in the last episode. Then we've got to replace the rear wheel arches on both sides. Once that is done and I've replaced the bottom part of the spare wheel holder, I would consider this floor completely finished on the Mini. And I'm not gonna make an episode of replacing these things because it's rather boring and we've done a lot of welding. I'm gonna move on to bigger and better things with this car. Then we'll be chasing the rust around the surface panels like the rear quarters and stuff like that. And then it's time to reskin the doors, put the new doors on and it's Hello Paint Prep. I can't wait to get to that position. It just took so long to get this car to where it is, mainly because I don't do it full time, I do it when I get the time. And I must admit, things have slacked recently because of all the issues I mentioned at the start of this video. As you can see, there's been some technicalities in making sure that that looks right. Because underneath, it doesn't matter so much that the welds are on show, However, in the boot, it needs to be seamless from the inside so it looks OEM and original. I've also got a brand new M Machine cross member that will be going in on the car. For everybody that's messaged about the TCR stuff and all the merch, the stickers and everything on the shop, you will have realised that it's all out of stock and I've been getting messages saying when's it all back. The other thing that's going on is a total rebrand, pardon the pun, of this channel name. We're going to be ditching the total car reviews and renaming it to something else because it's not really reviews, it's more restorations, and it's just more about filming what I do in my spare time. So all I can say is, I'm really sorry that this video has been so long and overwhelmed. There's been so much going on. With all that said, I think it wraps up about everything that I've done. Short update, definitely more to come. I will try and video some stuff on this and get it out and try and spice things up a bit differently. But as always, let me know in the comments what you want to see. Let me know your thoughts of everything that we've done so far. And if you want a 1098 engine that's a perfect runner, there's one currently below you guys and it is for sale. I'm open to offers. It's complete with a carburetor, gearbox, everything. Just I need to get it gone and get the VTEC lump ready to go in this. So with all that said guys, make sure you do everything in style. Stay safe and I will join you in the next one on TCR.